In this lesson, we'll take a look at the key elements of the Android development system. This system is a collection of websites and software tools that cover everything from training and reference through software development and on to publishing and monitoring your apps on the Google Play Store. We'll examine all of this in detail in coming lessons. I just want to give you a high-level view before we take a deep dive into the details. During development and app deployment, you'll be moving between these websites and tools. They're your major viewports to Android development. The Android Developers website provides training, reference, API guides, code samples, tools, and a blog. You can click on this link to go to the home page. We've already taken a peek at the developer's website. As I mentioned, Google has made big improvements in this website. It's a large and comprehensive site, and we'll be referencing it frequently during the course. The Eclipse Integrated Development Environment, or IDE, is the preferred and most used platform for Android app software development. It's the platform we'll use during this course, and the one I recommend. It facilitates code development, testing, and packaging for upload to the Google Play Store. From the Eclipse website, you'll download the software and install it on your computer. The Google Play website provides a platform for app marketing, sales, and downloads. Google Play includes more than just apps. It also includes music, movies, and books. It's the apps, of course, that we'll be focusing on, and you can get to those by clicking here and then on the Shop Apps button to look for apps. The Developer Console web pages, which are actually part of the Google Play website, give you tools for app publishing, tracking, and sales. After you've signed up as a developer, when you click on this link, you'll be taken to your own console showing your apps. At the moment, you're taken to a standard view of the console. Click on Try New Design to see the new version. Now, by the time you're seeing this, the new design might have become the standard. And you've already had a brief look at the developer's console. It's the vehicle developers use to upload apps to Google Play and track app sales and performance. And we'll take a deeper look later in the course. These development elements flow from the developer's website to Eclipse, to Google Play, to the developer console. And now let's take a look at the individual software development tools you'll be using. Here's an overview of the development tools you'll use to design, program, and upload your apps to the Google Play Store. Hang in with me here. Digesting this overview will greatly facilitate your understanding of how to get your development platform up and running and how it all works. Getting all the tools working can frankly be a bit tricky. There are a number of different tools and there are release dependencies between them. So I've created this graphic to help you through the process, which we'll look at in more detail in later lessons. It's definitely helpful to have an understanding of the big picture before we plunge into the details. It's easy to get lost in the installation sequence. I've included some reference links on the graphic for use during installation down here. We won't follow them right now, but they'll come in handy when we go through installation in coming lessons. Starting on the left of the graphic is the Java SE Development Kit. Java is the programming language used for Android apps. You'll download and install it on your computer from Oracle's Java website. It includes code packages, libraries, and a compiler. The Eclipse IDE provides the platform of tools you'll use for coding and testing. You'll download and install it from the Eclipse website. It includes a development user interface, screen capture, and app packaging. The Android Software Development Kit provides the code libraries and support for specific Android releases. You'll download and install SDKs from the Android website. They include code libraries, release support, a debugging interface, and API documentation. The Android development tools provide non-release dependent software that's added to the Eclipse IDE for availability during development. It includes an Eclipse plugin, custom XML editors, integrated documentation, and a layout editor. It also includes the Android Debug Bridge for debugging support. It's possible to use the Debug Bridge without Eclipse, but since we're focusing on an Eclipse-based development environment, we'll assume that the ADB is automatically installed when you install Eclipse. The Android virtual devices are loaded from the SDK 
as indicated here. This software will simulate various Android devices and link to debugging tools. They include device emulation, external device connection, and debugging support. The Android sample apps are also loaded from the SDK. These are important. They not only help demonstrate Android capabilities, they can also be used as seed code for your apps. The sample apps developed for this course will complement the apps provided by Google. Sample apps are Android release dependent, so you'll use sample apps built on the minimum Android release your app will run on. The Android Native Development Kit, or NDK, can be downloaded from the Android developer's website. We won't be using it for this course, but I'll give you a description of what it does in a later lesson. Google Play includes the developer console and is accessed via your web browser. You'll register as a developer to gain access to all its goodies. It includes app listings, uploading, downloading, statistics, and the developer console. So there you have it. It's a bit large and complex, but we'll tear it all down and make you an Android Tools Pro.